here. Good. <clears throat> Go back to where I changed anything. So, okay, your HPS is over there. Now, pushing contours together, found that one third two seemed to work best. And then I did it the other way, the left of Paris and so we decided on 132, but uh, seems the center line slope is not ideal. It falls below 0.5%. So, okay. How do we know what the spot emissions are? How do we calculate that? Um, 15 feet away. Okay, so that's that question. All right, yeah. Let's start with looking at your LPS, your HPS should be in this area. Um, just checking in to see if you can hear me okay, because um, I'm a little away from my computer. Marcella, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, good, okay. Not everything went wrong today. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> our HPS would be in this area. That's the kind of a relatively high area. Um, we have a relatively short driveway and we have about 130 at this location. This corner will be the lower corner compared to the other one. So we know that this side will be a steeper side and we're trying to control for the first 10 feet away to be less than 5% but then the rest of that can be 10% along the steeper side. So <clears throat> if we have our HPS equals to 132, which means our next contour down should be 131. Okay, now the first thing is that if we want to push our contours, the first one which pushes 132, then my HPS here actually should be higher higher than eight, higher than 132. So um, let's take a look at if 132 would actually be something that would work. So yeah, in this case, your 132 is like this and then one and uh, zero should be connected at this location. Uh, we would not have a swale. So the swale, in fact, could be dragged up and then come back to this place. And then, yes, go like this, which is good. Your, a, your LPS in this case could end somewhere here. You don't have to go all the way around to direct water to this direction. You could, you could directly go to your neighbors and that one would go this way, that's right. So your LPS could be some in some area like that. Um, you don't have to, yeah, again, you don't have to continue your swell like that. Uh, that's not necessary. You should aim for the water going kind of not directly to the tree, but, and, and also not to your own driveway either. So you wanna try to avoid the tree, avoid your own driveway direct water to the road. So <clears throat> in that case, if we have a 131.5 here, and then we have a 132.5, I can see where your, your issue comes. So that basically meaning this portion, there's only one foot of difference in vertical uh, one foot of vertical difference. So this line needs to be low, kind of shorter than 50 feet in order to make it work, make the, uh, the center line to be above 2%. And that is hard because my experience told me that this line is longer than that. So if that's the case, what we can do is we can lower that to be 131.25 like you did but I doubt that would help that much in terms of elevating or raising the centerline slope. So the only way is actually raising that one. 
if we raise that to 133.5, then you should be okay because then you have a two foot. So that means this, this length, this portion of the center line will only needs to be shorter than a hundred feet, which should be pretty easy to do. So that means this line needs to be dragged up and that becomes your first line. And actually that needs to be go between your building and your 132 before, which is okay. We're, we're still working on the concept. So yeah, that's your 133. And your 134 will be, need to be moved a little, which is okay. Again, seems like you still have, you know, if, you, if we can keep or move the 132 lower, then it's still a viable solution. Again, I am using my mouse, which is not entirely ideal. Okay, so, <clears throat> so this tells us your 135.5 is likely a better solution than your 132.5 before. Now, if we try to kind of go the other way around, if this is 133.5, meaning that your garage is likely 134, and now we have to verify, okay, 134 would not violate the 100, uh, uh, the 10% the, the and 5% rule. So Marcella, if you can, you can, you can measure this distance for me and, and tell me the length here, the distance here, we could do a quick calculation to just make sure that that's the case, that we're not going too steep on the lower side. Um, do you want like exact or do you want me to round it? You can round it. Okay, I think it was like 63 when I measured it last. Okay, so 63, let's say 65. So 50 feet of that needs to be 10% and 15 feet of that, would be 5%. So that means you can raise actually above, should be 5.75, meaning that your FFE could be as high as um, if this one I say is 129.5, you can get to yeah, definitely this, this exceeded 134, <clears throat> right? If this exceeded 134, mean, meaning your 134 would not, would not violate that rule of first 15 feet being 5% and the rest being 10. Does that make sense? This is the maximum. This is the maximum um, elevation difference from that spot to your garage FFE. That one, adding to the bottom of the driveway as 129.5 would exceed 134. That's the highest elevation that your garage FFE can get, which means if I set this as at 134, it would not violate that maximum slope rule. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so, so your 133.5, you set that one, and um, then you could actually set it at some location here because you would want the corner of that building to drain. So set it here and try to measure kind of um, from, from your HPS here to your LPS there, Try to make sure that it's over 100 feet, uh, not over, less than 100 feet. Then you can make sure that this, this center line would not fall below 2%. If you're still close to, or you know, slightly over 100, you could actually move your LPS a little bit lower, which increases the vertical difference, but does not necessarily increase the length of your center line, okay? So that's how you could try to kind of keep your uh, upper center line to be over 2%. I don't suppose there would be an issue on this side because you can see uh, I'm here now dropping on this line, I'm dropping below 130. 
So you have enough vertical difference um, along the center line. So next step, I would recommend exactly what I just said. Move your uh, HPS into a location um, as in indicated by this red box. Raise its elevation to 133.5 um, and move your LPS to these two locations. And then a, a rough, uh, roughly sketch out the 134, 33, 2, and one and zero contour. <clears throat> I would not expect big issues of that concept to, to work. Okay. Um, Marcella, you can you can actually start working on that. And if we have time, we can take a look at the how you um, draft up your driveway contours at the end of the class, because that's the that's that's the next step that you're you're going to need to calculate. So very quickly, <clears throat> how do we know what the spot average for the driveways are? I'm not sure what you are referring to because for the driveway you need multiple multiple spots right we need one of that one of this that and that and garage entrance and that entrance and 15 feet away you need two of them so these are all the uh, all the spots that you would need for your driveway you may be asking actually this one is that what you're trying to ask for for this question If that's the case, <clears throat> if that's the case, you're actually coming, come on, come on. If you're trying to start the driveway calculation, extend this line to your road. And this is the spot. That's the spot you 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 need to calculate in order to start your driveway calculation. And how do we do that? This spot you use that contour and that contour to calculate. Interpolate between these two contours. Okay, that spot you use that and this to to interpolate between them. Right, use the proportion measuring that distance and this distance and knowing what contour this is and that is, and then you can calculate this, this spot, for instance. Does that make sense? Um, I think, would it be like when we were doing, I think it was like, I forget which assignment it was, but like when we had to like figure out um, the distance between like right. the, mm. So basically, you would figure out the slope, right? So from 131 to 130, for, with that distance, you know the slope. And then you measure, OK, from that one to, to this contour, that's a very small distance, meaning that, yes, that spot is very close to 130, slightly above 130. That's how you calculate the elevation there. So regarding the 15 feet away from the building, what I would um, recommend, if we say garage is 134, I could offset by 15 feet and knowing, okay, that's my 15 feet line. Not exactly how sure how, how it aligns with the walkway because everybody's face map is different. I would just say, okay, this is 5%. 5%, meaning that this is 0.75 lower than your garage FFE, meaning that this one would be 133.25. The same thing here, that spot would be 133.25. And then once I did the calculation on this side, I know what this is, and then I know what that is. And based on these, I could calculate the slope from this to that spot, and then from this one to that spot. Whatever this slope is, whatever this slope is, it will be maximum. So 
meaning that your driveway is maximum at this percentage of the steeper side. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So for the driveway, there would be like multiple slopes. Yes. Like labeled on it. Okay. Right. You could label both of them. You could also label just one of them and put the arrow in the middle and say maximum what kind of slope. If you label two, then you do not meet the max here. Okay. If you label two, you would basically just say, okay, this slope is what? And that one is another. If you only want to label in the middle, then you say max, but the max number should be this one. Okay. Yeah, that's how you um, kind of represent your driveway and its slopes. Okay, let me zoom back in and see if I missed any of your questions. Yes, okay. So, yes, should all corners of the garage, driveway, and house be labeled? Um, yesterday, uh, not yesterday, the last review session, um, I did circle all the spots for the last group. So I will do it once again. We just talked about the driveway needs eight, eight of them, right? <clears throat> so everybody should go back and watch the recording just to make sure you labeled everything. We talked about, yes, there are eight spot elevations for the driveway. What about the house? Let's start from the house. House outside, all four corners. Uh, four corners of all the houses needs to be labeled. This one, no, because it's the porch. And that one, yes. And the porch, you need a ground elevation there, okay? That's the ground, not the, not the porch, the surface of the porch. And the porch, you can design it in two ways. The first way would be if I want my porch to be not level, to be able to drain by itself then you need all these spots on top of the porch to say, okay, this is sloping 2% away from the house. That's how I designed my porch. The other way, I'm gonna use a different color, is you say, you don't have to have all those four points on the porch. You could say porch FFE equals to one, okay? So that's the second way of doing the porch. Now, if we keep going for the other locations. So driveway, uh, we did talk about, okay, 15 feet away, we need two of them. And the walkway, one, two, any tangent point, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, those are your walkway spots. Um, and yes, when, wherever you have your door, you need one of them at the door. That's it. Of course, HPS, LPS, uh, you need them. I don't think there's any others. No, there's not. Okay, so all those are what you need to mark for, okay? Plus, plus the eight driveway spots. Okay, so that's all the spots that you will need. All right. Any questions about this part? Okay, I assume that we're good. I got a question about the final locations, actually. Uh, I think when, when you were talking about like at the bottom of the driveway, do we yep. need flat elevation like on the road? Uh, yes. Or, or so flat elevation on the road and then next to it on the driveway where those two materials meet? Yeah, let me, okay. let me move this one. So these two, the plus signs, should be the 
those two definitely. And that one. Okay. And this one. All right. Yes. So where, yeah, where the driveway connects to the road, there are four of them. Okay. Good. Okay. Let me once again go back to the list of your questions. So I just want to mention one more thing. Contours are imaginary lines. They should not um, be perceived. I mean, the offset of 15 feet, that is only to say if I want to um, say this is a cross section, it's only for to control that ground needs to be flat and then it can go deep, right? It's only to say that that 15 feet away from the building is um, 50, it's 5% it's below. And it really depends on how you design your FFP and other locations. The contours can hit anywhere. I mean, I mean uh, if you look in the cross section, it really doesn't have a relationship with the 15 feet or that line. It's really dependent on how you define your FFP and then how the 5% calculation gets you to where the next contour should be. Okay, if you think in terms of cross section, it's really to say 15 feet away, let's design the ground to be flatter. So there's no relationship between a specific contour and that 15 foot of, of offset. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else that uh, you would like to talk about for your work, Marcella? Um, I don't think so. I okay. think that helped a lot. So thank you. You're welcome. And if anything else comes up, you know, feel free just to unmute and, and speak up. Okay. All right. I'm going to move forward to the next one. So I believe this Jacobs. Jacob, are you here? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be good. So let me try to read. Possible make just one swell with one HPS and one LPS. Um, I wouldn't do that for this class, for this project. Should I pull my swell further out and make slow requirements? Mm, likely okay. But I agree the other side will get a little tight. It, should should be okay for the interim. Why shouldn't we worry about the next one? Uh, uh, I don't think we said that not to worry about the maximum 5%. Is it fine as well to lead to the road? Yes, to dump water on the road. In your stream, Mark. Okay. Just wait for a few minutes. Hey, Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. Take a seat. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're just looking at your questions. Okay. Thank you. So, for this project, I would not do one swell with one HPS and LPS because mm -hmm. the site is relatively balanced. Right? Okay. Yeah. If to say the site is completely not balanced, it makes more sense to have one swell going. Well, how do I how do I show an example? Um, it's basically because the high side, the the building, kind of the corner that's most difficult to drain. It's on a relatively balanced location. Yeah. Yes, in this area in this area. Mm -hmm. If, if um, um, let's see, yes, if the contours actually are oriented this way, then 
you might say, okay, this is actually just going to that direction. Mm -hmm. Then you would say, okay, I have an HPS somewhere in this location and then everything drains yeah. to that area. So, so for this, for this um, project, uh, it would be a more, more or less a balanced solution. And definitely there are other sites where you design for only one, one swell and, and that could work. So the second question for the interim, you actually should worry about the maximum 5% slope away. Oh, yeah. So uh, it definitely affects how you, um, how your solution would take form. And I think your base map is very similar to Marcella's. Mm -hmm. um, it might be longer, your driveway might be longer and your third 134 should work. Um, you would want to check if this is less than 50 feet, which I think it is, meaning that yes, your HPS would be, that this uh, arrow that I just drew will be over 2%, so you should be able to drain that corner. So that's a, that's good. And you have a 2%, 2%, yeah, I think, well, should work. Everything should work here. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Is it fine to have a swell lead to the road and to dump water on the road? Ideally, you would encourage um, the water to drain, to, to infiltrate along the way. But if you don't have anything to intercept the water in this location, it has to go to the road. Compared to going to the driveway and then go to the road, is it, it is better to not for, for the water to not go to your own driveway and then go to the road, yeah. right? So. Uh, if the tree is not specifically designed, for instance, as a tree trench, then do not direct the water directly to the tree. But yeah. the tree, you know, next semester we could uh, we could touch upon different types of greenstone water infrastructure where you, you actually have a media underneath the tree trench where it could encourage storage and then infiltration, which would mean that tree itself can become a management tool. But in this case, it's perfectly fine to let the water, actually, I would revise your direction a little bit and let it go like yeah. this. Yeah. And you should be able to keep the length the same as the one that you had before. Yeah. yeah. I, I got just 2%. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was that's, 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 that's good. Yeah. Then don't change it. No, if you make it longer, then you, 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 you drop below 2%, right? OK, so that's that one. Um, I don't think this is correct though. This one should be calculated by oh. interpolating your <clears throat> contour here and here. So this will be about 129 point something. The 130s on your curve, the 130s on the face of the curve, not the bottom of the curve. Does that make sense? And that one, it should be the bottom of the curve elevation. The curb is cut through. So the uh, I shouldn't draw it like this. Yes. Yeah. Looking, looking, looking from this direction down. I'm sloping down. My one thirty is somewhere on the curve, but. You want to calculate the bottom of the curve. Bottom of the curve here is defined. It defined as you need to in that one, the bottom of the curve there, interpolate between that point and that point. The reason why you have a 129 actually, oh no, no, that's not 130. You have 129 going like this is because. Um, you have the thickness of that curve. So how can I, how can I explain this? Um, let's, let's draw it in the other direction. I'm going from this to there. And I have my 129 somewhere here. And at some point my curve is, is broken by the road by my driveway. Okay, so 
what I want to try to calculate is the bottom of the curve that is connecting. So my driveway now is this, is a this portion. In... Yeah, it's the section okay. on the road. I'm, I'm looking this way, looking mm -hmm. this way to that line. Yeah. Okay. So this is this was my curb and my driveway. I break that curb and, and, and start connect to the driveway, right? And where I start connect the driveway is the bottom of the curve mm -hmm. instead of the top of the curve. Okay. Yeah. So that 130 is not correct. Your 130 was it should be here. That's where 130 is on the driveway. And you should calculate the bottom of the curve for this portion. And for the bottom of a curb, once you extend that line to intersect with the other road, road line. Okay. And your 130 contour later on you should start connecting here. That, um, so it's basically when 130 is at that location yeah. and start connecting there. Um, could my spot elevation, um, spot elevation tick marks be like? <laughs> Yes, More your spot, your 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 tick mark. On the driveway or yes, on the that's right. Um, I just explained to the others. Your spots would be here for that one, and then for this one, for that one, for this one, and. That one. Those are the four core spots that you would include in the final drawing. Um, and how, okay. how are they different? Are they different? Yes, they are different. When you calculate your driveway, you need to extend this line. Yes, and that is what you calculate to start calculating the driveway. That's correct. But for the final drawing, you could choose. If you want to include more spots than necessary, you're welcome to do so, but they're not necessary. Does that make sense? You pay more if you include more, meaning that you have a more accurate, um, the contractors will have more requirements that they will need to meet. They Then you would pay more for additional spots to make sure that they understand what you're trying to build. But those two are not necessary. You can include them. They're optional. They don't, the contractors will not require them to build the, the, the drug. Okay. So if you want to include six, go ahead. But those four, the red ones are required. Yes. Okay. So I think you're in a good shape for your first trial. And um, the one thing, one, the one question that I did not address is the um, whether you would get too tight here. I don't suppose that you would because your 133 is over here and it's only you no know, four to one slope, meaning your 134 only needs to be four feet away from your 133, that um, you won't have any issue connecting back in this area. It won't get too steep. Uh, so if, but if you have 132, for instance, if you have 132, the other things probably won't work. But if you have 132, then it means you have to fit one more contour. The backside will get a little steeper. But still, I still think you would have room for it. Um, the one more thing that I can, uh, I would remind is that the HPS equals to 133 actually means the 133 contour, yeah. if it connects, it will see. touch that. So should I change? You could change it just slightly so, above 133. Just so like there's a little. Just uh, a tad, yes. Okay. Yeah, just a tad. Um, it's not it's not wrong. It's just you need to know that that they touch there. Okay, your 133. If you want it to be exactly 133, mm -hmm. then they would be kind mm -hmm. of the two Vs mm -hmm. will have the common point of 133. Okay. Yeah, this is um, this is good progress, and we can move forward of you know dropping off the contours. Thank you.
All right. Okay. Um, I think next we have Eric. The Eric is Eric here. Okay. Okay. Good. Do you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's see. All right. So we have. Um, yeah, this looks like 131 as your garage will be a little too, too low. Uh, although you have a shorter driveway, but I still would expect your uh, garage at the feet to be a 132 or something. Yeah, because I, I think you would um, not have, yeah. So, okay, let's see. If your age, LPS here is 131. The Raj being 131, meaning that your HPS is lower than 131. Because your HPS needs to be lower than the house corner, then your, you, you won't have any slope for your swale. So um, the good, I, I think that the logical next step is actually calculating or oh, roughly estimate these elevations, which is good. Um, we can say 129.5 or something, and then um, measure out this, the distance here, and then calculate your garage FFP. Whatever the maximum number you get, you can lower it a little bit to get your garage FFP. And this is correct. You raise that 4.5 for your house, and starting from your garage FFE, measuring out you no know, 25 feet away, and then lower that corner by 0.5, then you get your HPS here. Okay. And then your LPS will be, yes, around this area. Your LPS could be around in this area, which means that will be 131.5. And this one would be 130, 130.5. And then based on that, you could start to kind of draft a, a swell center line and then continue the calculation, verify that your swell, both swells will be within that slope range. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, start from the driveway and then you no know, do I, I think well, feel free to, to start that calculation right now and then maybe we can we can revisit it at the end of the review. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah, I would pull, I would push your swell a little bit further away from your, um, from your house, the back. The, the back door, as long as we know is a door, you could even type in back door, or you could use a, a triangle, or you could use, you know, what architecture used to use. Uh, it's basically something like this. That, that could be it. You could use a, a triangle or you could just say door. But the key thing is to, you do have to include, include a spot elevation for that door. Yeah, on the ground. No step, no step. It needs to um, be accessible directly from the yard. Okay. Would, the, would that spot elevation be seen? The spot elevation be the same as the garage at the B, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you have all the corners, the same elevation as your garage at the B, it's, it's logical that that spot, the floor spot will be the same as all the rest of the elevations. But if you lower any corner for the garage, then it will be a different story. Yeah. Okay. Good to move forward. All right. Next one we have Michael. Yeah, I see Michael here. Okay. Move forward here. You try to clear everything here. Give me a moment to look through your comments here.
So, um, Michael, the first thing that I would actually check would be um, whether or not your driveway exceeds the maximum slope. And if not, even if not, even if not, is it necessary to feel, to, to, to add a lot of feel so that your house will be very high? Okay, that's the first thing that I would think about because you could, you could start to see my HPS now is very, it's higher than my uh, original elevation. Meaning that even my 135 needs to be dragged up to, oh, not dragged up. Um, that is not a, I'm saying that will become my first swell. And where is my 135 there? My 135 is over there. So the 136 even needs to be pulled closer because now it's getting too flat. Do you see what that requires me to do for the original contours? So likely, yeah, likely you're creating a little too much feel and elevating the house very high. If I want to draw a um, original elevation in cross section, you're basically creating a hill. Uh, let me draw a house over here. You're, you're, you're making it very high. So I am even creating that high hill and then I'm carving out a swell. And then this goes like this. I'm exaggerating definitely, but this is um, kind of just to demonstrate what, what a, high, a, a high elevation of the garage is actually doing to the original, original um, topography. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I sort of understand that now because I, I just haven't really understood like the red flags or like the different instances or I guess what what we should be looking out for because I also didn't really think about it in section so mm -hmm. I guess that sort of helps out a lot yeah so um I think you probably start started with calculating the garage uh, the, the driveway which because yeah. you have a dr long driveway that may actually be you know the 136.38 it's likely that precisely what the maximum garage could be. But then we could reflect and say, oh, does it necessary to be, is it necessary to make it that high? I mean, not, right? It's just, I cannot exceed 10%, but if I can make it lower, gentler, then, then, then let's do that. So um, I, now it's time to, to dial back a little, say, okay, if I, I uh, specify my, gar my garage to be 135, what would happen, right? Um, it might it might work out just fine, just as fine. Um, so, Wait, so, so I can set a value for the FFE and then test that to see if it's between two and ten. Yes, exactly. I thought I was limited to only using two, five, or ten, and then just like picking one of those. But now that I know this. I guess it clears up a lot of stuff. Yeah. So okay. um, yeah, you could try 135 for your garage okay. and see what that leads leads you, right? We, no, I, I won't say that your your solution doesn't work. Uh, yeah. It could work. Yes, it could work. Um, but the but the thing is that mm, it it still it still might have some flex because can you see that I have to drag my oh my uh, 136 over so that this area won't be too flat. Yeah. I'm still thinking even with that dragging just now, it's still too flat. Actually, no, I need, oh, I don't want that. I will need to drag it very close because it's 0.98, it's almost six, right? So I drag it up, but I can't change my 137, which means that slope still is too flat. This seems to me longer than 50 feet or close to 50 feet. So this might not be as 
steep as 2% even, meaning that this is a very flat area. So likely your solution is kind of borderline working. If we lower the garage, uh, you, I, I think you will have a, a much better solution there. I would say um, kind of aligning with what, what we talked about uh, with other students, I would move you know, the LPS here slightly over so that we don't direct water into the tree. And then I would put my um, L, LPS somewhere over here so that uh, my center line would be something like this. Okay. Um, so that's about the HPS and the slopes of the swales. The center line, just the random line, I would say is it's not a fixed line. Uh, is it random? Probably not, because you still have a lot of um, requirements that you have to kind of make work for the center line. So it's, I wouldn't say it's random, but definitely there's no single solution for center line. Right? There's a, a lot, a, range, a large range of solutions. All so, right. Uh, I, yeah. I, I guess random isn't really the best word. Um, but I guess what I was looking for was what you said. It's not fixed. I guess. Yeah. That, that wasn't something that I had wrapped my head around. So I thought I was looking for a definitive solution this whole time, and not uh, something that that can work. Okay. Right, you're looking for one of the solutions that can work. And over time, you'll gain experience and say, okay, actually, if I tweak this and modify that, that is an even better solution than the one that just worked. So for now, we're looking for coming up with just one solution that works. It's not necessarily the best solution, but over time you will know, okay, okay, I, I'm making this too steep. Maybe I can lower it a little bit, make it better. Yeah. Um, now let me try to keep uh, kind of commenting on the a uh, few of the others. For this one, please go to cat breakout room, and that's exactly what um, the the TAs could help with. How do I measure along a polyline that's a curved line? And and also believe there is a, a tutorial in one of the the videos that go go through that portion. Um, the next thing is, yeah, can, can corners share? Yes, that is exactly one corner. That is the same corner and we're specifying the ground elevation for that one. Um, yeah, we measure curves. And we went through, yeah, we went through what are the spot elevations required for, for this job just now, yeah. Yeah, I saw those in the other reviews. Cool. Yeah, anything else that you would like to talk about here? Oh, uh, I think that's it for right now. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Okay, well, good to move forward. Close that real quickly. All right. Um, I believe this is Jonathan's. Jonathan here. Uh, yeah. So maybe we can. Yeah, we can we can skip and then come back. Um, should be Samuel. Good time for me to take a minute break. Tuesdays is already posted on Canvas. It will be on YouTube. So there was a YouTube link that is um, has already posted. Yeah, you should be able to go back to that. Cool. Have a seat. So confused. I have no idea. Oh, no worries. I would point that on Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if the corner elevations in front of the garage are 0.5 higher, 
upper, upper, slow motion. Cool. Yeah. Um, so for this one, I would actually set the house 0.5 higher than your um, than your garage. As in 135. Yes. Yeah. And a little curb. Good. You still need that line though because the material is different. Usually, yes, usually when you um, construct the, because the driveway is a new thing, right? And the, the road was the old material, it's very likely, or it's almost certain that they would be um, of different materials. And shifted the 130, no, the 130 contour is correct. You should start right here, that's, that's good. This is very good. That one. Um, yeah, we just talked about this would be an additional additional spot because that was connected like this, right? So you would have four spots. So two adjacent spots on each end of the driveway. Yeah. So wherever the pavement boundary lines mm -hmm. connect. Uh, how do you know? your LPS is a little too close. Uh, in this case, your LPS is here, I think will be fine. In terms of not, still you, you would have a slight chance that your water is going to, some water is going to your driveway. Uh, if you can avoid that, that would be better. So basically say, you know, if, I, if, if my center line could turn and most of the water can still kind of be directed away from my driveway, that'd be better. But it's not, we're not, we're not deducting anything if that happens, okay? Okay, so this what is good. What was the reasoning for bumping the house up by half a foot? Because we don't want a half foot drop at the corner. Okay. Yeah, if we, um, we need, we need for this area to drain, right? If this spot, if that spot is the same as this one and even lower than that one, then, yeah, I don't know how to make it work actually, right? Because you would have a 0.5 drop over here actually. Does that make sense? I'm having a hard time visual, visualizing. So this is, yeah, this is, if this is half foot lower than this one, you would have a half foot drop over here. Um, yeah, so the porch is lower than the ground in front of the porch. Yeah, so you the actually porch. wanted to yeah. want okay. this line, okay. the ground line there to be flat, to be even. Right. Yeah, and then you can step up for, for one uh, step, 0.5 feet, and then get into your house. Okay, yeah. and then that would affect the spot elevations on the back of the house? Not necessarily, not necessarily, because if you, even if you elevate this to be 135, you're mm -hmm. still within that 0.5 to 1.5 range. Okay. The corner can be lower. Yeah, that's actually a good way to bring, um, to save some to save some space, avoiding for the adjacent the area adjacent to your building mm -hmm. to be too steep. Yes. So right now you have a 3.1 and a 2.4 slope. All those work. Okay, I don't think there's any red flags at this point that I can see. Um, 133. Yeah, I, I think it will, it will work out. Cool. Yeah, those, those spots don't necessarily need to change. That's good, that's good. Yeah, all right. Except uh, you do need to mark two slopes here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, spots. Well, I I did wait. I did go through the locations, all the locations that you need spots. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go back to the video, um, it's you, know, you can scroll to find that okay. slide. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. <coughs> I think next one is Sam's. Yeah. 
You know where he is? Uh, Samuel. Oh, hey. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Can the walk be at the same grade as the, yes, it can. A good question. Um, should these elevations be at the EIV's uh, exact spot where the driveway line? Yes, that's right. That's right. So, um, Then I, I went through the spots here. Uh, you do need two spots over here. And that only needs to be uh, to appear once because they're essentially the same spot. I would mark it on the walkway and I would try to avoid for it to overlap with the boundary of the, of the, of the pavement. So what I would do is I would, oh, that's too big. But um, it just work fine. Let me see if I can put it in the perfect place with annotate. <clears throat> For these, I would put my hmm, select and put it right here. Again, you can rotate the cross sign to be parallel to your uh, pavement line. The size of your cross sign, by the way, is better than mine. Mine is too small, but I would make sure that none of my cross lines intersect with other pavement lines because it just make it busy and, and less legible that way. Okay, so that's how I would mark the crosses on the walkway. This is, this is good. Um, you could also drag the cross a little bit further away. You do not need to mark anything inside the building. The FFE takes care of that, okay? The spots is only for outside. All right, let me try to go back to, do a little bit of checking of the, of the math. With that. Hmm. So, two, thirty one, six percent to five. Hmm. Red flag, one of the just one. Here, I'm not entirely sure that is over 2%. Um, is your drawing a 20 scale? Um, to make it this way, it's, uh, it's at 30 scale. Okay. Yes, as, as long as it doesn't cut uh, cut off your grading and content. If it's just a corner with the original base map and without any new things added, that's totally fine. But let's do 20 because um, we need to measure to grade the, the assignment. So if I do 20. So if I do this, so it's probably 30. So I would say it's slightly below 2%. That's my only concern with this draw. And the deal with less than 2% slope is because of the situation. Yes, this area will be too flat. Yeah. Okay, I will change that then. Right. 
I honestly think you should just elevate that corner to be 133.5. Then problem solved. Oh, okay, which corner? The corner of the garage? Yes, the corner of the garage. Okay. Um, but then don't forget that you would have one contour of 133 over here. Okay. And yes, um, it can be curved, but, but there's a little portion of 133 that way. So elevate this one. <clears throat> Doesn't have to be 133.5 exactly. It could be slightly over 133, then you should be okay. All right, another thing, there cannot be a 0.5 drop at that corner. So your, your, the ground elevation of that building should be, still be 133.5, okay? This is okay. That can be lower, but there, it, it cannot be lower in this corner because you cannot have a 0.5 drop just in that small area. Okay. Yeah, and we're missing a spot over here. Even though you already have one of that on your driveway, but that's not the same as the corner ground elevation. So you still have need one more in that location and that still needs to be 133.5. Okay. okay. So even a point, like drop from the edge of the driveway to a side of the driveway. Mm -hmm. I would say probably just point one, point one five. Okay. Yeah, because it's a very small distance there. You you don't want it to to suddenly kind of clash right. there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're missing a spot over here for the extra ground. Hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, I I, I think we can. Feel free to move forward. Um, would I need to raise my FFE for the house up a little bit just so that it's not at the same elevation as the ground around the finished floor elevation? Yeah, let's yeah. do 134. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's all. Um, two decimals. I know this is for estimation. I, I totally get it. And this is actually a good habit. When, whenever you haven't calculated something, make it either no digit or one decimal place so that you know that you haven't calculated yet. Yeah, later on, when you calculate it and make them two, then you know, okay, I have done that. That's a signal that you accrue that you need for yourself. All right. Should should I just to keep things simple? Should I raise that entire like the the spot elevations on all the corners up to one thirty three point five, or should I just do it in those critical spots? I think you should just do that. Uh, do do the, the the further away one. This one. Okay, copy yeah, that. These ones is actually good if you can lower them. All right. You're facilitating the water to go to your your swell, right? Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. And and by, by doing that, you're actually lowering the slope. If you raise that by 0.5, the ground there gets steeper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Clear. Then move forward. Andrew? Yeah, Yay, great. finally. <laughs> Probably by this time, everything has been solved. Yeah. <laughs> but let's take a look. Um, it's pretty further along. Okay. Yeah, I'd say um, we're, 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 we're kind of changing the scope of work here. So you would want to end everything before you get to that. Um, um, this. You want to actually end your LPS somewhere there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I was having trouble figuring out how to do that because the the contours for one thirty. Yes. And like. I can see that. Yeah. It's like in, they, it, it's like they start turning and I don't know. It's hard to connect them. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and I can see why your HPS being 132 is actually a little too low to create that 2% slope. Because here, 
you're only at 131.5. And um, the length here, I think, yeah, this length, I would, I would think it's a, at about 100 feet. Yeah, if it's 100 feet, then you should, you have to, at least you have to rise to 133.5 to make it work. Does that make sense? If it's around 100 feet for that center line part. Because 2%, 2 feet, 100 feet, 2% would be 2 feet in elevation difference, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So your HPS needs to rise to about 133.5, meaning that here, uh, you would need to be at one 134, yeah. even uh, even yeah. a little bit more than that, because the distance seems to be longer than 25 feet there. So by raising the HPS and the level of the garage and house, you can end the swale sooner? Um, I'm not, I'm not yeah, quite would, getting that. Yeah, like, would by doing that, does that mean like I don't have to bring the swale all the way to the road like I thought I had to. Yeah, <laughs> the property cool. line is here. So yeah. technically you wouldn't be allowed to go over that. Yeah, I mean, on Tuesday we were talking about that and I was over in that group and so it was like, yeah, you can- Oh, you can change that, this area. That, like between those two trees. Like, you can change this area. <sighs> Okay. Yeah. Well, that's two. I mean, you and Stuart are saying different stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I don't want to bring the uh, swale all the way to the driveway. So, uh -huh. whatever I can do to bring it back and touch the property line, I would be in favor of doing that. Yeah. It's okay. just like when I did the driveway calculation. Uh -huh. I got to an FFP and everything just was calculated from that. Uh, from from this um, the spot over here and there. Yeah, started, yeah. started there and then figured out the driveway stuff. But but now it's just like it was hard with the, trying to get the swale to end before it got to the driveway. Mm. So. If I raise uh, the FFE a little bit, and, you know, I don't know if I can do that because the pitch of the driveway is all over. Um, I think I can go a little higher on that water spot. It's just at 2.7 and it can go up to five. Yes. So maybe I have room there. Okay. Yeah, well, that's like um, lower than that. It was, it's like 9.7. Oh, I see. Okay. We should um, still be, if you have your cat open. I don't. No, okay, no, no problem. Yeah, we can, we can measure here. Yeah, I just want to get a sense of, okay, what, what's that uh, distance? <laughs> Okay, we have 47. So 32, 10%, 15, 5%, 0.75, that is 3.2, which means we can rise about 3.95. So the bottom is 129.33, adding up that. So we should be around 133.28. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. So if that's the case, um, yeah, so we I can like only be at, okay. So if we say this is 133.2825. Now that needs to be, let's measure again. 
Yeah, you've got a tough situation because you have a, a, uh, a shorter walkway. Let's do this. That's about 30. That's measure 30. So if it's 30, I would use that to get 0.6. So 132.655. Oh, six, six okay. Now let's measure this line. Okay, so let's do this. Ah, here. There. One section, then do this here, what here, hmm. do somewhere here. Let's say it's 90. So if it's 90, 90 means we're going down 1.8. So we get to 130.85. Am I doing correctly? So then we have to go down there. Oh. Oh, well, yeah, it would be a little higher than, so it would be, it's almost at yes. 131. It's, it's almost somewhere here. Well, It needs to be here. Okay. Then, then you have a longer line, then you are below it. Oh, this is tough. <laughs> so what we can do. Can, can the enter pull the HPS way down? We can, um, I mean, I'm like toward, toward the bottom of the screen. More. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, so if, even if we're here, we are a little bit above, this is 131, so we're a little bit above 131. So that means you kind of, what you have there is actually making sense. Um, sure. Why you have kind of have to drag that 130, because you uh -huh. have to modify that 130. Hey. Let's see. If if I make it somewhere here, even if that's the case, I can only lower a little bit, and maybe it's possible that I'm I'm ending that just a little a tad above one thirty. That's possible, but um, but I would also imagine this line would be kind of the same. If I need to go like this, the line would be exceeding that 90 feet. That line possibly will be longer than what I just measured. So, okay. Yeah, I think I think for yours, you'd likely have to have to go kind of beyond your pop line and place your LPS below 131. Yeah. So so this location would be would be. The, the one that's um, kind of have to happen. Yeah, so, yeah sorry about that. No, yeah. Oh, um, huh. I found something. <laughs> I found something, this being a little too low. This is more like 129.5. Or well, four or five, maybe. Yeah, well, I was like measuring the very corner. It like it like jumps out a little bit from there. Uh huh. So yeah, I can move that up to be like a straight line. Let's see. It's about that way. Um, not too, not too different. Point four, you earn point one, something like that. Not 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 too substantial, but it might help a little. Okay. 
So, so if you, if you would have to do that, um, it's definitely something that we overlooked when we created all kinds of different face maps. Okay. Do you have like <laughs> yeah. the solution for this though, like something? Because I would love to see that like after. Well, your um your LPS being being right here, oh, okay. um, meaning that you are actually on the right um the shape. The shape is actually makes sense. Um but, but what I can see is that these lines can be dragged closer. So my 132 point something is here, 132, yes. This goes up and then you would have, you won't have a 32, okay. You can actually go closer. And if this is 132.65, you're at about 10 foot away from that. So we can, we can do something like this. And this can be closer because the site can be steeper. And then we go back to 132 somewhere here. And your, um, your. Well, all the way around the house is like 15 feet. Um, at five percent, so I, I feel like oh, only one. the front, only the front, not the side. The oh. side is four, four to one. I think, I think it is. Well, let's let's check. <clears throat> All right, so on, under slope parameters, it says maximum 5% slope for the first 15 feet away from the front of the building and, and added your, right, so you're right about the front. Yeah. I just thought it was here on the whole thing. Yeah, it's, um, it's the front and okay. then the door here, Thanks. right, the door here by creating this flat Face here at two percent, you're automatically meeting that five percent slope rule. So, so we can drag the these um, closer, and that one can be something like this. And then, you no, know, I think we'll be better in terms of this the situation. Yeah, and that can be rounded. I mean, definitely. yeah, even at the front, like even just saying just at the front of the building. Like a run out of room, so that yeah. the front. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Right, right. In your case, with a short driveway, we kind of have to make it very steep to be able to elevate the house to a certain elevation, and then the swell would be able to be steeper enough over two percent. Yeah, I, I I agree. All right. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. No worries. Um. Okay, anything else? Uh, is that still bleeding? I think we went through all the others. Okay. Chats. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I am looking at the chat here for. Okay. My next one, Sandy, you're up. <clears throat> okay. Awesome. Um, multiple options. <laughs> Option yeah. one, option two. Okay, which should I select 
Yeah, this one has the same issue. Uh, the upper swell does not have enough slope. Um, yeah, so this one is 5%. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is oh, what? Sorry, I, I uploaded mistakenly, uploaded all the key options. Oh, no worries. Yeah, so, so no want to look at the 8% one? Uh, 10%. Oh, you have one other? Yeah, the. the, the so this one is eight, the, five, eight, seven. Here, yeah, okay. Easy. Yeah, so uh, I had the question how to handle that part, but I have found some mistake here already. Mistake. If it's 10%, this. you should be able to end it before, way before the, the, the tree. Yeah. Yeah. So can I show you on my laptop? You can, yeah. you can, you can share screen, and okay. uh, it should be able to appear on this. Because I have blocked on it. Let me stop share. You can share. Go ahead. Yeah, I am gonna drag it over. Go ahead. Yeah, so what I found that <clears throat> so I managed the tree somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I the confusion is here. One confusion where I to work on this area that one i already clarified last time you're okay that that yeah. that part is okay <clears throat> yes okay. and then now the computer is just for all the spot elevation and uh the slope really. so if i now i need the review for the spot elevation the item. yeah yeah so okay, now I uh, my way of calculation is trying to I try to find out I try to find out this point, this one, this one, this three point, mm -hmm. and this three point. Now yeah. the question is whether I ought to put all these three points or not. Um, reason? let's see. If you can zoom into just that area, uh, starting from 134.75, okay, that one is. When road is, I consider C plus A, so it's coming C. What's off to me is that um, your these contours are parallel, and if you are if you calculate it based on yeah, I can tell you why it's coming parallel. You can intentionally design for them to be parallel. That's fine, but oh. there is definitely one portion that wouldn't be right. You, you have to make some transition somewhere. Oh. Meaning, yes, this is a walked line. No, this 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 line would be lower because this is steeper. But if you want the first portion of that to be uniform, there would be a walked corner to make that transition because ultimately the, the average slope, this line, that line would be different. Oh, that is the thing I did. I considered both of this line the same slope. I tried to give the same slope on both of them. Oh. So what I did from here, I calculate, start calculating the same slope and mark the slope. Oh. Is it a wrong way? Or? But then how do you get to the same garage entrance elevation? I think that one. Uh, yeah, so what the triangle you're telling, the triangle is here mm -hmm. coming here, it came here. Yeah, so, so, yeah. 
So you're actually using this area to make the transition. Can you see that? Yeah, I cannot. Yeah, so this 134 and 134.5 and this 134 and 134.5, they are fairly different. And I'm, I'm having doubts about whether or not this is actually 10%. Yeah, 10%. This, this seems to be exceeding because no, it is 10%. here is one, right? And that is 0.75 <clears throat> and they're not proportional. Do you mean oh, what I'm saying? I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that right. looks like it's off here. Okay. That may be where you where things went wrong. I uh, think you calculated 0.25 maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's. Yeah. That, that's that's the mistake I did. Right. So I should divide it equally that that part and on top upper part. Is it? You could. It's totally fine if you design it that way. But but I would say it's not ideal to have the transition over here actually. Your transition is, is here. I would much prefer for your transition to happen here because this area you want it to be usable. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, if I want it to be relatively parallel, I could do this actually. I could do this, but then suddenly something happening over here. That area is, is making the transition. But again, even if I want to do it parallel, it's not really great because if if this is a very wintry or cold area, I actually want to have some side slopes. Does that make sense? Because then water will be able to go to the side easier. If I just use this and make it parallel, water is going to sheet flow like this. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it doesn't go to the side faster. So that you may have an accumulation of ice so, during winter. So once I then what will happen as you mentioned at the very beginning, that one side I'll be ten percent and another side I'll be more than less than ten percent. Okay. So, so you could which side I suppose to make ten percent and I can go. To. This is this is the lower side. So that would, you would make 10%. From here to there, that's 10%. And then from here to there, you will be less than 10. Because this is the steeper yeah. side. So the lower side, uh, so I should start, instead of coming from the road side, I should start from this side and go to you, you start from the lower side. Okay. The spot is lower here, higher here, steeper here, gentler there. And you make that 10%, that will be lower than 10%. No, I get it. But yeah. when, when I am doing this part 10%, mm -hmm. so from 10%, I'll start calculating from here and upwards, or I should start calculating from the driver all the way to the road. Oh, okay. How did you how do you get mark the peak for the how did you get to the 135? You specified a 135, right? Yeah, I get it. Okay. I I I consider the middle of the slope, middle of the road, and then I get the point. So I use the max ten percent and five percent, then I get the one thirty five point. I have one thirty five. Yeah, one thirty five. Okay. Then there is something might be off. Okay. If you use the middle of the road and did the ten percent, actually that means the lower side. The, well, this one is will be over 10%. over 10 yeah so i think your eight percent solution might be the best one might be a safer one where no slope is exceeding 10. Yeah, 9%. yeah nine percent should work too because yeah. it's a small distance okay it took a lot of solutions I, I am, oh no worries yeah, this is eight percent. I'm not getting a certain slope for the soil. Okay, so um, yeah. okay, the reason might be might be that you're lowering your HPS a little too much. You don't have to. You don't have to lower your HPS that much. Okay, so if I were to say from here to find my HPS somewhere here. Even if I'm at 50 feet away, I can be at 133. 
that make sense? So yeah. I don't have to lower this to 135, 3.5, or well, that's okay too. You know, I'll take it back. Let's do 134 here. And if even if this is 50 feet, that distance, I can do HPS equal to 133.1. Something like that. Oh, yeah. Then you would have enough distance to create a 2% okay. swale. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, 200, 200, 200 feet, you said 100 feet and 200, two more than, yeah, more than 2 feet. Mm -hmm. and more than yeah, good. So that one can be even 33.25 also. It can be 33. Yeah, 130. Well, uh, if you measure this line, I, I think this will be less than 50, around 50, something like that. So, yeah. which means this is can be higher even. Yeah. Yeah, definitely HPS could be higher. So here you can see uh, how I have to get to I think from this side all the way up. So 8% at this AG, at AG 8%. And on this side also I think AG 8%. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing this, I will start this from here, 8%. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you have a spec specified FFE here, yeah. meaning this, oh, I don't want this. Like that okay that is 134 yeah that is 134 yeah. and this is 15 feet away 133.75 okay yeah. that's um that that one is actually 134 where are you 133 you calculated but let's do 15 feet away which is 133.75 those yeah. two okay yeah. and then from this point and calculate this point using 130.26 yeah. and 133.75 and interpolate between to find out where the tick marks are. So it's essentially you have just one line. Divide. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then Divide, you have uh, you have that one and this one and you find the tick marks. Okay. I get it. Yeah. And and you need to do it twice because uh, this this is different. That one is different. From that so one. data we say uh one thirty three point sixteen feet is one extra five so seventy five. This is one thirty three point two five. Yes. Yeah. Use one thirty three point two five. Use that one and that one and this one and that one to find the tick marks in between and then connect them. Yeah, and they would not be parallel that way. Oh, no worries. You can, yeah, re refresh, yeah. I think this one is 34.25 or something. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I just wrote it. Yeah, the other way. Yes, that's 134.25. Yeah. That's why. Okay. So I can click this one also. No, not this one. That one, 134.25. Yes. So this one is all you need to do. Those two, those two will be based on your calculations of the walkways. Do I need to calculate? Yes, those two you need to calculate. Um, uh, again, considering the five yeah, five that five. one, five, yes. And this uh, one, if it's not exactly the 15 feet mark, then it will be slightly different from the 134.25. 
So I have to be, I have to be another type of person to be strong. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So not be more than. Let me go. Uh, so again, and so the six months or oh, sorry, the quarterly some period here. I should also, yeah, when I put in the spot location, it's starting in a lot of time. I got the codes and starting in a lot of time. Oh, um, if you want to rotate, you can, or you can use leader lines, you know, or you can mask them. So not the building line should not be part of the line. You would mask them. Yeah, mask is it, them. Is it, is it okay if the mask is uh, over the building line? Yeah, you could. You could. Okay. Yeah, just make sure that you don't cover too much of it. Just um, okay. make the mask, uh, the the radius of the mask smaller, okay. as small as small as possible. Yeah. Let me see how I'll pass it to the Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Arthur, everybody. Those are good work. Good job, group two. If you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. So for my driveway, it's like 60 Um, it really depends on how that would systematically change everything. If you are already pretty high in your FFP and you have enough slope in your swell, then you can lower it a little bit. But um, as you can see from um, Andrew's example, he has a pretty short driveway, which actually lead to the FFP being not that high. Because your HPS needs to be lower than the RFFP, the HPS being low does not help to create a swell of sufficient slope. So it's kind of systematically changing. I, I really think it depends on whether or not you have enough uh, swell center on slope in your solution. Yeah. If it's too steep, then you can try to lower it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could try to lower your corner if you can. If you lower your corner, it means that you can bring the, the close contour closer to your building, which actually would help make the other area gentler. But yeah. The corner of the garage and the house. Hey, Wu Hong, I have a question. Can I share my screen with you? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm having this issue because I just realized during the review today that the first 15 feet of the driveway has, has to be a 5% slope. Mm -hmm. So I did that, but then I got 11.36 down here. So mm -hmm. the only way I was thinking to make it under 10 was to lower the FFE. But last night I had to raise it a bunch to get like my swale slope to be over two. Okay. In this case, you can lower your LPS. If you okay. lower your LPS just by a tad or even a half foot, you would create that, that uh, bigger elevation difference, right? And, and honestly, uh, you don't have to lower that one. Okay, so let me see, annotate. So if we have to do uh, FFE equals to 134, for instance, uh, you don't have to lower that one. This can be still be at 134. And um, then that will still be 133.3. You, well, actually that doesn't, then you don't have to change anything, right? Um, I was mainly just um, like concerned about my driveway slope because it's over right. 10 now. So if I lower that to 134, then you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be above 
ten percent any anymore, right? I I think so. I can try it. Mm. Yeah, I I think this will be enough to lower it down to uh, below ten percent, and you don't actually have to change anything else. I don't right. think. It yeah, but your um, your LPS very likely you you wouldn't be on the one thirty two, because you can see your um, if this is one thirty four, the one thirty two contour on your driveway is likely in this area, so that means you have to change your one thirty two. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So your um, your LPS will be in that area anyway. Okay. One thirty two has to be changed. Yeah, so that actually helps you create a steeper slope uh, along the uh, along the other other uh, center line. So that should not violate anything, but just LPS needs to be lower by half foot or so. Okay, so I should just lower my FFE and then lower the LPS. Yes. Yeah, and and, and I don't I don't see. No, that would change, that would change, but anything else would be the same because the corners can be the same as, um, as the garage. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good, thank you.